Welcome to the SCP Foundation Integrated File Server. To begin, please insert your Foundation Personnel Badge into the card reader. Authorization. Approved. Please select Items Numerical Code to view. Processing. Your file is ready to view. SCP-1467 Rating, plus 190 plus X Wall JPG SCP-1467 at arrival to Site-19 in 2008 Item Hash. SCP-1467 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, SCP-1467 should be contained in a padded cell with no fewer than 3, 3, audio recording devices installed in the walls. SCP-1467 should be allowed free use of these devices. While sleeping, devices should be kept on repeat playback. Batteries are to be changed weekly. SCP-1467 should be medicated using document 23A and a therapist meeting should be provided once per week. SCP-1467 should always be referred to in person as Mr. Smith, as referring to it by any other means throws it into a panic, rage state. This has resulted in moderate injuries to it and research personnel and has seriously impeded attempts to interview the subject and keep its mental state stable. Foundation personnel wishing to visit or make use of SCP-1467 for experiments must seek permission with its currently designated therapist. In the event of a containment breach, immediate termination of SCP-1467 is authorized. Records of SCP-1467 should be reviewed every month, and at least six backups should be kept in different locations at all times. Description SCP-1467 is a 47-year-old male of African-American descent. Unless constantly reaffirming its existence, SCP-1467 slowly fades out of reality. The effect manifests in a gradual decrease in the ability to perceive SCP-1467 by any known means until it eventually vanishes. This has been known to affect objects and personnel in SCP-1467's immediate vicinity. The Foundation have been unable to determine the extent of this ability to a satisfactory degree but current experimental data suggests it is localized to SCP-1467. The subject claims to be a construction worker. It further claims its anomalous properties arose in a gradual fashion after the death of its wife and children in a car accident. During this time it developed several coping mechanisms to keep its slowly degrading condition under a modicum of control. Habits such as repeating its name, checking its pulse, keeping itself talking to others drawing and writing descriptions of itself on its body and surrounding surfaces and keeping recordings of its voice going while sleeping all developed over time. Currently the Foundation have found no records of subjects stated wife, children, house, car or extended family ever having existed. There have been no car accidents in the claimed area at the given date, no graves could be found, the provided address has never been in use and all relevant social security numbers remain unassigned due to what appears to be a computer error. The only evidence of SCP-1467's existence consists of a few co-workers remembering it, but accounts vary widely. As an example, construction worker comma described as a close friend, was unable to recall subject's skin color with certainty. As a result of the mental stress the subject is under. It has developed a severe case of bipolar depression, in addition to chronic sleep deprivation. Its anomalous condition continues to deteriorate. By current estimates, the Foundation will have lost it by 20- Addendum 1 Please note the containment procedures only call for referring to SCP-1467 as Mr. Smith while in its vicinity, and this only due to its sensitive mental state. At all other times it should be referred to using its SCP designation. It has been noted that personnel assigned to SCP-1467 have repeatedly failed to do so. Further violations will be severely reprimanded. Keep it professional. Director Experiment Logs Experiment Number 16, Test Procedure, SCP-1467 was restrained and made unable to speak. 
Research assistants Reiner and Dieter were in the room and kept observing subject. Dr. Thorns supervised from an adjacent room. Date, dash dash results, 10 meters colon 12 s, unable to recognize subject as SCP-1467. 14 meters colon 32 s, unable to recognize close of SCP-1467. 19 meters colon 7 s. Unable to identify SCP-1467's race. 24 meters colon 0 s, unable to identify what SCP-1467 is currently doing. 35 meters colon 46 s, unable to identify how SCP-1467 is sitting. 39 meters colon 41 s, unable to identify anything save the presence of a humanoid creature in the room. Research assistant Dieter started a recording at this point, consisting of SCP-1467 describing himself. Subject returned to a describable state, curled up in a fetal position on the floor. No sign of the restraints or the chair in which the subject had been placed. Subsequent tests showed similar results, with a minor variation in timing, tending downwards. Test Conclusion it would appear SCP-1467's condition is slowly getting worse, and that it can affect others than itself. Dr. Thorne's experiment number 19, test procedure, experiment 16 was repeated. At the humanoid creature phase assistant researchers were replaced by D-class personnel with prior experience in SCP testing. D-class personnel will hereafter be referred to as D-1 and D-2. Date, dash dash results. D personnel expressed agitation at the half-perceived creature. D1 clawed against the door while D2 kept his eyes at what remained of SCP-1467. The following conversation was recorded. Assistant Reiner, please describe what you see. D1, expletive redacted, let us out. D2, I don't know, there's... It's... There's something in here. I can't see it. Assistant Reiner. How do you know there is something in there? D2, expletives redacted, Assistant Reiner, how do you know there is something in there? D2, I can feel it. Dude, it vanished, get them to open the, expletive redacted, door. D1, I'm trying, I'm trying. Assistant Reiner, please remain calm. D2, it's coming for us. I can tell it is coming for us. At this point, D2 started screaming. D1 started crying. A recording of SCP-1467 describing himself was activated, and armed personnel entered the room. D1 was curled up in a fetal position at the entrance. D2 was found lying a bit further away unconscious and was initially mistaken for SCP-1467. SCP-1467 was initially not locatable, but after approximately three minutes, 19 seconds, could be found leaning against the far wall, clutching his head in his hand, apparently suffering a panic attack. Test conclusion, is the effect contagious or does it just lash out around itself, Dr. Thorne's experiment number 20, test procedure, in order to ascertain whether SCP-1467's condition is contagious and to what extent, 1, 1, D-Class will be assigned to SCP-1467's cell for a three-week period. After this time the D-Class will be removed and kept under observation for one week. Selected D-Class is 27, male, nonviolent, designation, D-17321. Date, dash dash results, D-17321 was removed and terminated with no anomalous properties arising. Therapist reported an increase in the lucidity and calm of SCP-1467 during the period, and a decline afterwards. SCP-1467 has shown signs of worry and repeatedly requested information about D-17321's current status. Test Conclusion, Inconclusive we did not order D-17321 to ignore SCP-1467, and though they remained suspicious of each other the first week they seemed to have formed a moderate bond by the end of the experiment. Recommend further tests. 
Dr. Thorne's Experiment No. 21, Test Procedure, Selected D-Class is 32, Male, Nonviolent, Designation, D-9452. D-9452 was given strict orders to ignore SCP-1467. Date, dash dash results, after approximately 15 minutes. SCP-1467 physically assaulted D-9452, who proceeded to break SCP-1467's nose. The subjects had to be restrained by guards. Test aborted. Therapist reports an improvement in SCP-1467's mental state. Test conclusion, failure. I have a hard time seeing how he could have reaffirmed SCP-1467's existence harder. Apparently nonviolent does not cover being shoved around. Dr. Thorne's experiment number 22, test procedure, in the guise of finding a treatment, SCP-1467 was convinced to cooperate with the experiment. Selected D-class is 37, female, nonviolent, designation. D-361. D-Class has been given no special orders on how to interact with SCP-1467. Date, dash dash results, after two weeks and four days D-361 vanished. It is currently unknown whether...